Da -da, da -da -da. We are live on the air. Do -do -do. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, everybody. It's uh, e. It's Ian and Franklin. Being yep. So Ian's, uh, he's not having technical difficulties as much anymore as he's uh, in the middle of the creative process. So his his uh, yeah. his environment is um, organized chaos, I guess. Is the <laughs> best word to use. So I'm taking over the hosting duties this week. Um, I, obviously, you'll watch this on a delay. Probably Ian will probably encode it and put it up on his page. But um, yeah. Anyway. So for now, Ben might join us later. Doug might, but for now, how, how's Ian doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, I would say it's all chaos, though. I mean, <laughs> like I was telling you, I'll I have me nice. <laughs> part of my desk by my kitchen. Part of it is on the couch, and then part of it, uh, you guys are on right now. I see. Um, and I was putting up. Uh, my other lights on my room because I have it going. I'm got it trying to go all the way around my room, so I was added. I'm just trying to add in another section. Uh, to that, and then I was gonna have them both the different lights meet it at a central point, and then. I was I was in the process a while ago of making like a long extension cord nice. for that. That was like it was like two extension cords in one, and then I'd have that go down along the walls, and right. that way both of the you know like the input things are going to yeah. be uh, like right next to each other. Whereas uh, kind of uh, before it was they were on opposite ends, uh, so it was. Uh, they were kind of hard to get get to if I needed to change them out or anything because I I got one of those Wi-Fi controller things that I I'm, I still got to test out. So uh, if I if that works out pretty good, then I'm gonna swap them out and stuff, you know. Gotcha. So I just I was just trying to do it for more flexibility and uh, easier access to get to that, you know. Uh huh. Um. And that's been kind of a pain in the butt today because the uh, the little adapters that I've uh, spent so long to make, they were, you know, it's like I tested them before and they seem to work fine. But then when you actually go to need, when you actually need them, they start giving you problems. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, <sighs> I wasn't sure what I was going to have to do. I was, I think I might have to redo one of them or whatever but i was like i gotta get the, my i can't have my table in chaos or my apartment in chaos for weeks while i'm trying to get this right. light <laughs> shit worked out so i'm like uh, girls i guess hey baby never mind the mess yeah uh <laughs> that's why i have my shit in the guest room i get tired of i can close the fucking door and just walk away yeah I so i guess i'm just gonna go to my desk now and just cable, ma I got to cable manage it and shit. Cool, cool. I, uh, yeah. Ian and I were also discussing, um, both of our, uh, setups are in flux right now. Um, mine yeah. is overgrowing larger than this table. Um, you ever see like a plant that has been growing on a porch so long you can no longer see the house? You yeah. see plant. That that's okay. kind of what's happening here. This thing is enveloping everything, and um, to get to stuff, I got to stand on stuff, and um, so eventually, I'm gonna have a desk back there. Um, my wife and I are trying to do spring cleaning because you know it's spring. That's what you do. Yeah. And, uh, so our agreement is, you know, so I don't feel bad about just going out getting a big desk and then putting it in a messy fucking house. Uh, once the house is cleaned up, then I'll go out and get a desk. Because i got to wait for Ikea to open up anyway. Are you keeping a bed in there? It's the guest room, so yes. Okay. What, you, guys, what you should do is just get, like, a fold-out couch. Um, we have a futon. 
but this is a guest room. Yeah. And no. How many yep. guests do you have in there? Like, well, how often? Got, not Well, none now, because Lace is a fucking mess. <laughs> you oh. get it clean, you're going to actually want people. This is a brand new bed that I bought right before I met my wife. And I moved it in because uh, I had, you know, I just bought it like a couple months before I met her. And she had a nicer bed, so we had hers. So she had a, a shitty bed in here before, and she got rid of it and put mine in. So this is going no fucking where. I just paid this thing off, basically. Uh, once I paid off my credit card debt, this was paid off. So it's it's, it's staying in. It's what I get. <laughs> but, I, I, uh, I get that, man, especially if you bought that. Right. It's a, it's a queen. It's not a small bed. I, we have a futon. It's a piece of shit. We really want to get rid of it. A, a queen uh, is is nice and comfortable. A futon's a, a pain in the ass because it's more frame than bed. It's, you know, it's like you, if you ever have to move one, it sucks. So, yeah. my, my last apartment, I had a fold out couch, like a not a futon. It was a, it was like a you know a full fold out bed with a mattress and shit that I got from the thrift store for forty dollars, and huh. I you know it was plaid. It was ugly as hell, but. It was forty fucking dollars, and I was like, "All right, and I got it." Took me and two other guys to fucking move off of the truck into the house, and doing that, it, op- it like you had to turn it sideways to get through the door, and it opened up part way, and we're like, "Oh shit, we're we good." So I got it. We got it in the house, and when I moved out, I left that fucking thing there for uh, the next tenants, or make- I got my security deposit back somehow. I figured hmm. they would have charged me for, you know. Uh, put leaving furniture there, but no, they because my old couch. I had that. I had three couches. I want. I had two at one time. I had a leather couch. I had the fold out bed, and then before that, I had a shitty couch. And when I got rid of the shitty couch, I moved it out into the street because there's a dumpster right next to the house. I pulled it out by myself, and it was gone it, within the end of the night. People were like that, but uh, yeah. I but just yeah, this room's this room's a little bit bigger because there's a wall right here where the keep my guitars for the closet, but there's still room for stuff, so I can scoot it over. Uh I just I just would like to uh I feel bad for you that you don't have like a whole like fully dedicated like office because I know that would be pretty cool. I mean that's kind of what this is, because like it's really this was my wife's space and I kind of took it over and like it's I mean, like, she's got um, a bunch of nice books. I went through a, a box of books. I was like, oh, this is just a box of shit. When I was putting stuff in the, we have a storage little, we call it the cubby. It's a walk-in closet. And uh, I was like, oh, I'll just put this, you know, in the cubby since it's just storage. And I open it up, and it's like Edgar Allan Poe and all this shit. Because my wife's an English major. So I was like, fuck, I can't put this in storage. This is better than the books I have. So now I got a clear space out. We have a bookshelf. It's already full of like half good books, half shit books, and like a bunch of my sci-fi knickknacks. So uh, I mm. got to move everything around, put it all on display. So when I'm sitting at my desk, you'll look back behind me and you'll see my badass uh, collection of books that my wife's got that I inherited. Yeah. Along with my uh, posters like this one. Or right there, yeah. That's a that's a framed Nuka Cola poster. Um, I framed it and I framed another poster before I realized, well, fuck. If I put it on a wall, by the time I get a desk, it might, I'm going to be sitting in a different spot. So the one's framed is just sitting on the floor. That's actually just held up with the uh, command strips. Mm. It's been up for months, hasn't? The other one I actually hung up and it kind of fell. So I was like, hey, I'm not redoing really anyway. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I was, I mean, I was considering for a while because I just have a, I have a meager one bedroom apartment, sir. <laughs> and sir. I, yeah, pretty much my living room is just like, uh, you know, like my living room slash office. And I've considered just like bringing my bed just turning my bedroom into the office and then the, just having my bed out, yep. out in the living room because there's like room for my couch and my bed and everything. 
Well, my old apartment, like I said, we had the fold out bed and that actually worked because we had multiple roommates that stayed there. So like my one roommate had two kids and her boyfriend would come over and stay the night. The other roommate, her now husband, uh, stayed the night all the time. So they basically lived down there. And since it was a dupla, it was a townhouse. So I was upstairs all the time. They were downstairs. They had, you know, the, the kitchen, a half bath and <clears throat> the little fold out couch. It actually, you know, worked, you know, you, if, if that's, if you got enough room for it, it's, it's, it's all right to have, uh, as long yeah. as you have, as long as you keep your stuff presentable enough to where someone can walk in and go, Ugh. yeah, you know, no, I, I keep my stuff pretty clean. Like I'm, I'm not the type of person that I like, I hate having like clothes on the floor and shit, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I see that's the other thing I put uh, well, a lot of times. If you, if uh, you folks at home don't know this, but when Ian comes on sometimes and I'm talking to him and I have the lights on, sometimes there'll be, clothes on the bed those are clothes i do the laundry that i just have to sort and i just dump them on the the bed to sort them because my all my clothes are in this closet right here right i have a billion t-shirts my wife actually has like dress clothes dress shoes fucking proper attire i have t-shirts and like a couple grown-up pants and big boy pants and mostly jeans and dickies (laughs) If I have a job interview, I gotta go shopping. Shit. Yeah. But um. Well, do you want to talk about uh what both of us uh the new things that we got? Well, I got mine. I don't. I think you said you ordered yours, and you said you you first. Okay, so I I ended up uh going in for a three D printer, and I uh. I picked it up from Micro Center uh, a couple days ago. Did yeah, that set you it's back a, a lot. Or did you get a refurb floor model? Only, uh, only drove by a little old lady on Sundays. Uh, no, well, I I did get it. Uh, it was an open box. Mm. But nothing wrong with that. That's uh, how I got my monitor. I think was an open box. Yeah, and the box that I got it in was. It's it was actually quite uh packaged very well actually. <laughs> it's like really taped up. Um <laughs> shit it fell. Let's put tape all over it. He'll never know. <laughs> but yeah, like it it's a like a seven hundred dollar printer though. Cool. Cool. So, cool. You're gonna are you gonna make you got yourself it for like five hundred <laughs> Selling keychains and shit. No, I mean I'm maybe. Sorry. I love I love Etsy because they have shit you can't buy in regular stores. But most of it seems like those guys that are like, "Hey man, y'all want some CDs? No, I got I got a CD burner too. I don't need you to." It's like, "Hey man, you want some keychains? <laughs> got that <Yeah>. crack?" <laughs> <laughs> or or either that or like those uh, Nuka Cola uh, caps that are like obviously a piece of paper glued to an actual bottle cap. Yeah, it looks very tacky, but uh, yeah, congrats on getting the 3D printer, man. I know you're you got the 3D modeling, you got the printer. That that's fuck you are. Yeah. Uh, you're the assembly line right there, living the dream. Well, it's it's it was stupid because I know how to. I I'm like one of the last people to get a 3D printer. I'm that actual first one of the few people that actually know how to model that shit. You know, right? You're like, uh, ever since I've known you, that's what you do. You're like, I like 3D printing, I like modeling, and now you're like. Hey, no, I got one. <laughs> yeah, you you get uh, the you get the car right before they quit selling that model. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I and my stepmom wants me to print out a couple things already. That's that's right. When I met my wife and I told her mother that, oh yeah, I buy stuff on eBay and sell stuff. Oh, you sell stuff on eBay? Get rid of a bunch of uh, my daughter's crap. <laughs> you know, yeah. which. I got, I got, I started selling crap on eBay to get rid of my crap. And the problem is, I get something and I'll go, I need to get rid of this. I can't get rid of this. This is still good. And I put it in a well, tote somewhere and I forget about it. Yeah. Well, to her credit, I was, it was my idea because I, I was think I, I heard about it, 
a lady that uh was selling like custom like uh outlet designs you know just the plastic covers oh. and i don't know if she was using 3d printing or if she was using some other technique or whatever for it but mm -hmm. i thought it would be cool to do custom ones and i figured since she does like the, the dog bed and the mm -hmm. the dog treats and stuff to do like a bone mm -hmm. like plates for like light switches or whatever you know because they're longer right so well i know um where's the oh i was like where's the chat okay I know we weren't going to do the uh, battle stations till a little later. I wanted to show you this because you just were saying your desk is all uh, in pieces. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I was on my one of my favorite subreddits, Battle Stations, and just looking at stuff, getting ideas. <laughs> and this guy, so, you know, they they always go cozy little nicknames. My safe place, my home away from home. This guy's my safe place, and I look at it. And it's a nice little, you know, desk and monitor, all that. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is he said safe place, and it's a glass desk. And better screen share here now that I got this up. Uh, application. Okay. But uh, bear with me, folks. I'm, uh, I'm experiencing technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, so yeah, this thing, is that better? Yeah. I was like, oh, glass desk. And they're like, well, it shouldn't be, you know, the first comment, I'll go into a little bit. The first comment was like, well, uh, you know, a desk shouldn't be that bad if it should be able to hold weight. It's got his monitors or, you know, on a stand on the desk. His speakers are on the desk. Granted, his computer's not on the desk. But, uh, oh, shit. Oh, all right. But, uh, I fucked up. I made it. It's too big. I can't shriek. It won't let me go down. What the hell? Damn you, internets. Imagine if all of those monitors were CRTs instead, though. Yeah, that would that would be unfortunate. Oh, that's right. Okay, here's the comments. I was like, you say safe and then go with a glass desk? And he's like, I don't want to put money towards a new desk, which I feel you, dog. But so is there an inherent danger to a glass desk, or is it just they're difficult to keep clean? I would think commercially available glass desks could handle an adequate amount of weight so I gave him this uh link here. Oh, you actually commented in on that. Yes. Okay. Here we go. This guy says, let it rise from the ashes. He had to rebuild. Here's, can you see this? Yeah. Boom! <laughs> he says, uh, well, shit, fuck, shit, fuck. I get home from work one day, unlock my door, like I always do, and find this. I stare at it for a few months, lock the door back up, and go for a drive. I'll let that image sink in for a bit. And look, look at all that. Look at all this fucking glass. Yeah. I was nervous even just uh, clamping my uh, microphone arm onto the desk. Yeah, he had a, he had a micro arm on that uh, the my safe place or whatever. But it's like uh, the glass did just shatter; it exploded. Fortunately, no one was home. Even more fortunate is that I wasn't in the room. I would have nearly had a heart attack and cut myself up bad. So he ended up getting a wood desk. Uh, that was the start. I mean, it it ended up looking good. I mean, there's. Where's the finished yeah. product? Here's his, you know, newer desk. And it the thing, and my comment, my comment at, was also there was a recent guy who's had a glass desk. The frame actually broke on his. Oh, really? And that blew my mind because the guy, well, this guy said, um, 
you know, here's my new uh, battle station after uh, what happened. I'm like, well, what, what happened? And I don't know if you could see here. <laughs> Shit. Shit just broke. And look, there's his monitors. Damn. And I was like, oh. Yeah, look. Yeah. Whenever you get on uh, eBay and they're like, as is for repairs, that's what the fuck happened. <laughs> Shit fell. Yeah. So I was like, well, you know, what happened? And then he all has like LEDs and shit. I guess that's a before. Yeah. That's still a glass. That's what it was. See, he had it like that. And it just fucking collapsed under it. I don't know why. I mean, that doesn't look that heavy, right? Right. Well, but yeah, he, he I think the, he said the glass was fine. But, you know, the. Uh, hmm. Metal fucking broke, so I I wouldn't, you know, if I was buying one, I I wouldn't, I'd stay clear of it now. I mean, I know you've got one, and if you've had it for years, then you know, yeah, cool. Um, uh, I, yeah, like it's I paid like four hundred dollars for this corner desk. It was a <laughs> an investment. I I at least wanted to have a good base for my whole setup here, you know. Right. Um. Well, like I, I picked, I pretty much picked mine all out. I just got to go to the store and get it. Um, I, now that our local IKEA doesn't open until June, there's one in Cincinnati, but I'm not going to drive two hours and then not drive another two hours back when I could just wait for the other one to open. Yeah. So plus, I'm going to wait a little while longer so I can go into the as is slash return section because I want to use a countertop because it'll be more solid wood. And it's the more popular thing to do. It, they're, they sell desks that are made to look just like the people make with their countertops. It's just that if you buy, say, a Linmon uh, desk, the top is actually, it's a wood veneer with a uh, honeycomb cardboard underneath. Oh, shit. And, yeah, people like, and they say if you put a heavy monitor on it or a monitor arm that you have to clamp down, one guy said he was leaning to unplug a USB and just his hand went through the fucking desk. Because it's it's a $7 tabletop. <laughs> the reason it's so fucking cheap. So yeah. I, I want to get durable stuff. I've looked at it. Basically, I'm looking at spending probably about 300 bucks, But, you know, it should last, so. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, well, I was going to say, though, uh, if you're going to be clamping anything on a desk, like, I put some foam pads on mm -hmm. you know like between the clamps but like i get i suppose you could probably get if you're doing like one or two monitors on an arm on a desk the the point is is that you want to get you want to at least put some like like planks or something between mm -hmm. the uh desk and the clamps so that it distributes all the you know, like the, the weight on it, so it's not from a single point, you know what I mean? Right. Now, see, what I was saying, I ordered um, I ordered a, a vertical mount for uh, my monitors, because right now I have uh, an arm like this, and I got my 34-inch on one and the portrait monitor on the other, and other than right here not having a viewing angle worth the fuck with this monitor... <laughs> um, Eventually, I want to get another ultra wide and stick it under this thirty four inch, so I can do that with the the mount that I ordered. It supports up to twenty seven inch, and really, it's the same size; it's just longer, so yeah. it it doesn't really matter. Um, but I can put this one on it and be okay. Um, yeah, they they really should just have like a different like way to measure size for monitors because. You have to specify the if it's an ultra wide or not, you know. Well, it, it, that website, uh, Display Wars, helps because you can put in whether it's twenty one by nine or widescreen or like four by three or whatever. So you know those true square monitors. Yeah. Um, and it'll show you plug those in and the and the size, and it'll show you what each one looks like in relation to each other by different colors. You'll have like the rectangle of the biggest one in one color. 
the square of the smallest one and another. So I, I use that a lot when I was figuring out what, because I want something that's almost as long as this one, but not as tall. Yeah. So, I don't uh, even know why we even keep like, why don't we just standardize this? Maybe go one inch lower than, or uh, one number or whatever lower than ultra wide. So it's just like 10, 10 by 20 or whatever. So then then it's like two squares then. Yeah, well, they, uh, mine, uh, they said it's really two, like if I took two 17-inch monitors or 20-inch, I can't remember. They said it's like two monitors side by side, but I, would, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Because I'd, I'd be the same height is the thing. Uh, twenty. I, the ultra wide I want to get is twenty nine inch, and that really you can only get an ultra wide. If you find a twenty nine inch that's not ultra wide, it looks goofy as fuck. Uh -oh. But uh, speaking of ultra wides, copy. One of the first uh, stations I want to talk about tonight is a uh, an ultra wide. Oh wait. Wait a minute there, buddy. You haven't... There's nothing else that you want to talk about that you've been up to? No. Because there's... Uh, talking about me, I've... No, sir. Same old, I'm, same old with you. <laughs> I'm a working man, sir. All I do is go to work, come home, go back to bed. That's haven't it. worked on any uh, streaming no. projects or anything? What did, no, sir. What did you do? Sleep. What did you do over the past weekend? Sleep. Well, we w uh, went to a swap meet, walked around, a, walked around a fairgrounds an entire day, and only walked away with like three magazines. Oh shit! Yeah, there wasn't shit there, but it was it was the experience. It was doing it with my hanging out with my dad, and my father in law. So that's yeah. all I did. But uh, well, I I just know I'm looking forward to your next stream, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I get I get lazy, especially on the weekends, man. You go, yeah. you go, I'm gonna I drink my newest, I'm gonna stay up all night and the next thing I know. So I'll and after I drink a can of Mountain Dew. Okay. This thing is uh <clears throat> goddamn ridiculous, by the way. Are you, are you seeing this? Yeah. <laughs> I it's like like fire and ice, huh? That's what they're calling this one. Well, I mean look at the the, the orientation of the monitors is what made me go, what the fuck? Because I've always been a big fan of, like, landscape and portrait together. But this guy just did, you know what, fuck it. And he put a portrait in the middle and two landscapes on the side. And he got so much hate for this shit. Like, all up in his ass. This looks terrible. It's stupid. And the thing is, that's, that's okay. It's not yours. It's mine. <laughs> But uh, apparently, I read I read the guy's answers where he worked at. They let him get two ultra wides already, and then he got a 4K in the middle because his stand he didn't have room for a horizontal 4K, so he said to hell with it and stuck it vertical. <laughs> and people were like, "You're wasting those ultra wides." He's like, "No, I can just turn my desk to the side and be looking at either one." I mean, and it's it's not like you know. That Doug would be hating that one. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're curved. Oh, that's so, cool. So it kind of goes all the way around there. See. Yeah. And he's got a big wood desk too, so it's you know. You love it or you hate it. A lot of people on Reddit were buttholes about it, and I, I it's the first way. Why? And my, he's like, "Why not?" And I go, "That's the best answer." Yes. Just because fuck those guys. It's not even for his productivity. He says he has to have like fifteen windows open at a time, so it makes it productive. Yeah. Uh, for I me, I, I don't think I would ever get a curved screen though, because like since I'm a designer and stuff, like mm -hmm. I feel like I I need things to be straight, you know. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't get one now just because the price is stupid. When I got my monitor, you know, ultra wide alone was like seven hundred dollars, and then, yeah. you know, I I got this for three hundred, and now 
you you still can't even get you know a flat ultra wide for you know barely three hundred bucks. Are oh, they going up? Huh? I guess. But uh, yeah. Did I I saw uh? Did you see how the for some reason even after the five eighties came out the uh, RX the RX four eighties were going up. They were like. Yeah, people were buying them and just overclocking them. Because why pay, you know, why get a 580 if you can just get a 480 and overclock it? But that's stupid because the yeah. 580 was cheaper, right? Right. So, but uh, here's another guy. I only think this guy's got one picture of his uh, setup. But I like his style. He's got his little TIE fighter here from Star Wars. And uh, he's got his his uh, audio interface and his headphones. Oh yeah, that's microphone. nice. That's nice and clean there. Yeah, and like he's got something different. He, granted, he's got a countertop style, you know, workstation, but then he's got like these old filing cabinet drawers, and uh, also like he's got the uh, JBL uh, speakers, which I'm actually considering now. I thought I had picked out which ones I wanted, but I've got JBLs in my Chevy, and I really like them. So I don't know. He's got a vibe, which yeah, whatever. He's got those uh, those hex tiles, but they're not illuminated though. No, he's got a uh, some kind of tiles, but they're not a. Uh, it, they're not the ones that uh, we were looking at the the nano leaf bullshits. Yeah, he actually uh, goes into what those are on uh, the subreddit somewhere um where's it at there it is comments oh the wall art is just regular canvas that i painted so it doesn't do anything fancy with the sound because people are like are those like her sound isolation he's like no so But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it is what it is. Yep. You know, it's, uh... I would... I would definitely say this is better of the two. Uh, how many did you have? Three? Um, well, I I got one more. It's the uh, one that I told... There's one that I didn't gush over, but apparently everybody saw and said... And I, I don't know I don't know why. So I figured I'd include it and see and see what the hell I'm missing here because I can't for the life of me, I don't see what's so great about this one here. The it says I finally on board the ultra wide hype train. And he's got, you know, the little cheap, I think it's an IKEA table. because uh, those legs are like four bucks and that tabletop looks like a yeah. fold out table or something. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, they they sell cheap tabletops. Uh it's got the he's got a steel series uh mouse mat and apparently he's got a iPad because that's an iPad uh cover. He's got the little stand for his phone right next to it without his phone in it. Uh he's got the little audio uh uh source uh speakers. Uh looks like a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, his Overwatch mug. He's got an Asus uh, monitor there, which oh, yeah, that's that's one thing I want to get to. Uh, I want to do with my three D printer is like I mainly got it for you know like designing my my own like stuff or like my setup. You know, like I want to mm -hmm. make like a holder for my uh, USB drives or like my SD cards or whatever, and make like a phone holder and like all that extra shit, you know? Right. But yeah, go on about the Asus though. It's yeah, an it's Asus a, monitor. Asus looks like it says G Sync. Um, and I mean, you know, he thing is he matches. He's got you know the the Steel Series mouse, the Steel Series mouse mat, the Steel Series. Uh, it looks like a sticker on. I don't know what the fuck this is. I didn't read the it, 
description because you know people ask questions all day and he fills up. That's uh, what these are Steel Series headphones. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming that's probably what those are down there. I can't see. Uh, but yeah, that little thing was you know I thought fairly plain, and you know the comments. Like I said, it's got 4,400 plus upvotes. And you can't even see his tower. It's there. You know, but it's like barely lit up in the corner. Yeah. And he's got a fucking figurine of a stormtrooper. By the way, did you ever, did you get around to watching that Terry Crews? No, no, I have not. Hmm. <laughs> they totally punk you on that though. Oh yeah. Why is that? Well, did you want me? To, do you want me to tell you, or do you want me to let you? Well, go ahead, because I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch something if it's just spoil my ass. Huh? I, go ahead. Sp- give me spoilers, dude. I don't want to watch it if it's just a bullshit uh, thing. Uh, well, he, the, they get his reaction, and then uh. The, one of the camera guys, because they have, there's like a few different camera guys because, uh, you know, there's, it's like a collaboration with him and then Terry Cruz's guys or whatever they're filming. And, uh, they, one of the camera guys was like, he was, uh, he said he didn't get the shot or whatever. And then, uh, they act like he's like flipping out and stuff because he's, uh, he's like, you're, you're serious. All these months of building and stuff, and you didn't you didn't even get the shot. And then th- they end up like it was just a prank for Terry because uh, I guess he was like sort of a prankster too with Jay. Mm. Hmm. I, was, I was I was sort of surprised because I was like I, I was like that's sort of crazy that Jay I never seen Jay flipping out like that. <laughs> what you fucking. <laughs> Yeah, that was a long, long time coming. That thing was. Well, I don't know. Like, did I didn't see any uh, update videos or anything for it? No, like, I, mean, I just he was moving, so like he was, you know. Plus, Ryzen came out. Yeah. Well, you didn't even. Well, I figured you wouldn't do any update videos because you wanted it to be a surprise for Terry, right? That's true. But I was just surprised he didn't. After he did that, he didn't, like, I, I was sort of expecting him to do, like, a whole, like, series of, like, step-by-step things after the afterwards, you know? But, that is cool. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I, uh... I mean, the build wasn't really my cup of tea anyways, you know what I mean? Well, you know, he... From what they were describing, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Someone will dig it. I mean, as long as it gets somebody into the whole interest and the hobby, because like Terry said he got into it to hang out with his son, and then he started getting into building them just to do it, and his son wasn't even there. And that dude's yeah. Terry Cruz is a very multifaceted guy. He is a living renaissance man. He is. He he can act, he can play football like a motherfucker. Uh he can paint he paints he, he draw he designs furniture <laughs> he uh yeah that's what uh jay was saying he wa- is uh he wanted to was... design a, a computer that lived up to the room it was being put in you know right he's like he's like i showed my wife some of your designs and my wallet did not appreciate that terry <laughs> and um but yeah he's a comedic you know genius i don't know how he because he, he was a football player and then he just gets it he knows how to be funny and then he's also an accomplished flautist. I saw uh, an interview he did where they said, you know, we heard you know how to play the flute. And he's like, well, yeah. So they gave him a fucking flute on the spot. And I don't remember who the, the female guest was, somebody they had her doing, like, she did, like, the splits or something stupid. And he's sitting there freestyling on the fucking flute for, like, five minutes. I'm like, he, that blew my mind because he's very good. I don't say he's good enough to do that for a living, but that's something I didn't know he could do. And 
God damn. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good because you can't put all your eggs in one basket, especially like even though he's athletic and stuff, that his athleticism could just go just like that. Like if something happens to him, you know, just he's an actor like now, any I mean. sport. Oh yeah, I mean he he uh well for a while he's like he had, he was on the news because he had a porn addiction to where he would spend twenty something hours a day looking up porn and. Yeah. You know, I can understand that because he seems like a very details oriented guy to where he would probably obsess over stuff. I don't want to say OCD because that's everyone says that that's its own thing. It's not it's not just something you just toss out there, but he he's very focused and driven. I can understand that this, you know, the creative outlets really help with that. Um, I personally, I love his enthusiasm and stuff. He's a lot like uh, Nick. You ever watch Nick Cannon on TV? He's a little bit. He's pretty enthusiastic too, I especially like, uh, with like kids and stuff. So I love watching uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's very into what he's talking about all the time. To where his hands yeah. are like this, he can't sit down and sit still. He wants <laughs> to talk about it. and to have yeah. you know to have a um, an astrophysicist like that is a beautiful thing. Um, Rich, I also Scott. I I have a uh, yeah Dr. Brown. I have uh, friends from high school that are all over Facebook with the posts about anti Bill Nye the Science Guy, and okay, yeah, he talks about sex ed, and so now you're thinking he's saying it's okay to be what? Okay, you're a Christian. You're, I get your friend. Then one of my friends posted a video where they were saying that he he says vaccines are good, and they were talking about how they're bad. I go, oh, wait a fucking minute, you're talking about vaccinations. Shut the fuck up. God damn it. You're not going to vaccinate your kids? What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sorry. We're friends, but no, you're just fucking stupid if that's what you believe. I'm, you can believe the earth is flat. That's fine. They they do that too. They they found Jesus. Now they believe the earth is flat. And now they're thinking, don't vaccinate your kids. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I well, said a little, that's, that's something I've been seeing a lot more, and I'm, I don't understand it. But <laughs> by the way, I was mentioning uh, uh, Doc Brown. Like I remember when he was saying, "Great Scott, one point one gigawatts," and that's that's actually still that saying is still pretty crazy because because if you think about it, one point one gigawatts that would be uh, I I think he's saying jigo, but it's actually gigawatts. Jigo, so that'd yeah. be that, that's that'd be like. That'd be a million one kilowatt power supplies. Yeah, the, o- so the that, only that would be uh, crazy. Yeah, the only gigawatt is uh, Jay Z, right? <laughs> but uh, before Perfect. we before we talk for a billion years, you want you want break into the news and find out what's going on in the world today, Ian? Oh well, we uh, before we do that, can we uh, let's go through the uh, just bring up the three the three builds again real quick because I, we sort of got to decide on what i mean i i would say uh number two is my number one and then number the one third number two the third is probably second for me and then the first was last okay so the the, the one here with the uh whoops what the hell did i do i didn't mean to do that <laughs> I'll just do this. So, this one here with the um, uh, port uh, landscape portrait landscape is your three or your two? Yeah, that's that's my least favorite one, probably. But uh, the second, one, yeah, that one would probably be my favorite. Uh, over this guy with his one monitor. Yeah, he's got his X bone, man. <laughs> He's ready to play. See? Hey, I only have one monitor, but I can, I can uh, appreciate somebody else's setup over, over my own. You know, <laughs> I, I would like to have uh, more, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm doing it one piece at a time, like Johnny Cash. What about you, buddy? Um, my personal favorite is probably this one. Because he's got a little bit of everything. He's got multiple monitors. Okay. He's got an audio interface so I can still play guitar. He's got my keyboard. 
Yeah. I want similar. He's got the speakers I kind of want. I mean, he, he's kind of got it all without being – this one, it, it's good for what he wants. It, it wouldn't do it for me. So, so you, you would be the same order then, huh? Uh, yeah, because this one, while I understand simplicity, I don't know how the hell it's 4,000-some likes and, you know. <laughs> right. I get it, but – Okay, so what's this uh, number two's, uh, since he won with, with, who are we giving a shout out to here? Uh, let me go to the. Because our opinion there. matters. Yeah. Well, Mr. Uh, Rye Guy 97, R Y G A U Y 97. Hi, Rye Guy. He only got 206 upvotes, by the way. The fucking, the, t- that's why I said I can't understand. This. Did not get as many upvotes as this. More people fucking uh, like the mon- one monitor on a well, looks like a fold-out table. Which, by the way, those same kind of tables that are white, those really look like fold-out tables. Oh, those are. But most of the ones you see on uh, when they're white, yeah, they're they're a plastic Walmart table. You see, a, yeah. you see a lot more of them on average battle stations because they're like just your average bullshit. But you know, whatever. I play CS:GO and uh, Dota. <laughs> I'll put a, a, like a five thousand uh, dollar rig on a fold out table. Right, that wobbles. Yeah. Well, the comments were like, you know, oh, they're like, what's uh, what kind of you know desk is that? And one guy says, it looks like the one I got from IKEA. And yeah, you could get you know, yeah. What, what does he say? It's just an IKEA lemon and Aldis combo. So. Yeah, actually, before my current rig, I bought this desk before that rig because I was like, I'm going to buy a really cool rig, but I want to get, like, a really good base first because I rigs can come and go, but my if my desk is really, if I take care of it, that's going to last me, like, forever, you know? Right. Well, this guy has different uh, legs here. But, uh... As you can see, this is basically the same thing for yeah. for twenty five bucks. <laughs> so and and it's pre drilled. Oh, here we go. Actually, you probably like this one here. <laughs> it's like a corner one. Yeah, and it, it's sixty nine dollars. See, they'll get the corner ones, and then they'll get these straight ones, and they'll stick the straight ones on the end of the corner. You know, and it's, uh, the, the, the straight ones are 45 bucks. So $46 plus, you know, what was the other one? 69. So that's, you know, but it's fiberboard, particle. <laughs> and if I could, I'd get one of those desks that like go all the way around you where you, you could just, you get every, you could get to everything just by spinning your chair around, you know. Sick as a dog. Gonna vomit. See, I wonder if I'm waiting to see a setup with that where it's a round table going around you and then you have all curved monitors going around you. That would be super crazy. See, here's a wood uh, countertop, 98 inches ac- across. And it's all straight up. This one's beach. They also have an oak one. But, uh, you know, I. I, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm gonna go to the store and shit might change my mind once I get there. But uh yeah, he's got a you know, however many dollar setup. I mean his monitor has gotta cost a butt ton. He's got that on a twenty five dollar yeah. table. So you wait you do you, man. Right. All right, so on to the news. Do they sell desks at Micro Center? Uh you know, I don't know. Have you been down there lately? I mean, I'm, I am doubt that I, they have your monitor arms there. Well, they have monitor arms, but they're not... Because they have TV mounts for, like, if you want to hang your TV on the wall and stuff. But nothing I've actually spent money on there. Because I mm. just ordered... My, the mounts that I got, my it's where I can stack the monitors on top of each other. I got it because it was 24 bucks. Oh, really? Or No, I think it was 20, yeah, 23 bucks. No, those and it was a you know Vivo, so it's you know name brand. 
uh, with free shipping to my fucking house, you know, it's normally they start at forty dollars. So I, I saw that I was like, I'm and pe- it was buy it now. People were watching it. I don't know what they were waiting for if they were going to make an offer or some shit. But I was like, dude, it's twenty three dollars. I'm buying the fucking thing. So, yeah. but uh, anyway. So you haven't been down there lately, though, huh? Not since I uh, bought my uh, last hard drive. This last time I went there, because it's kind of out. It's out of the way. It's not like right. on the, it's not on the way home. I gotta go east or west or something, and it's not not on my way. So I I see nothing but like rising plastered all over their website. I'm like, damn, man, you're killing me. Well, you know. People, people are gonna buy it because oh, it's new. it's like it's really hot now like every everybody like a lot a lot of the tech reviewers and stuff on youtube i see that are you know that they've always been like had like intel rigs and stuff they right they're like i'll try building one and see how it does yeah did you see kyle from bitwit uh he uh said that he posted on twitter that uh he had to, when he emailed uh, the cooler company that uh, made his cooler, they wanted to ha- have him pr- prove that he had a Ryzen CPU before they sent him an ad- adapter. So he sent him a shot of like the six or seven uh, CPU boxes with the post that said, Bleed me down. Yeah. But, have, uh, by the way, I finally got my other uh, cooler uh-huh. uh, for my. CPU because uh, the other one that I had. Uh, you want to bring my screen up here? All right, hold on. Uh, what's up? Okay, so this is this was the oh shit, this was a CPU fan that I had I had gotten. Mm-hmm. For uh, you know, to replace my one that was faulty, but like it doesn't even have. It's kind of like, it's it's like a weird one. It doesn't even have any like thread threaded holes or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only paid eight dollars for it at uh, Micro Center, but uh, so I ended. Up, I remember I told you last week this I was able to get a shroud off for it, mm-hmm. and uh. It does accept normal 120 millimeter fan things. So then, like I got this one here. It's another PWM fan, mm. uh, and it, then it fits. And then this will be able to clamp on there. Um, cool. What I was thinking of, though, I was gonna maybe uh, figure out a way of uh, mounting this on the other side because this has a you could daisy chain this. It has mm-hmm. one that you uh, so like I could plug in this one and then the other plug will plug into your motherboard so, so you're, you're gonna do like push pull like sandwich well I, I was thinking about you think i should have like because this fan is blowing uh towards my head mm-hmm. and then this this other one i could reverse any way i want but uh so if this is going this way uh you think i should have it this one not blowing into it so it would go through or should i have them blowing against each other uh no that'd be stupid because you gotta have the airflow it only it has to go one way like to which way do you have it going out of your case uh oh well this yeah the shroud would be on on this side then the mounts on does it go out the top or the back of your case it it's it would go out the back, so I'd probably have to have it. Uh, the way you can tell which way the fan the fan is blowing is like it always blows air out. Usually, if you have these ones with where it has the the little uh, support beams on it, that's how you it blows that way. Oh. oh okay, so it's on this. It's on this side. On my, you you uh... see the little. On my fans, it also has a little thing on the side, like an arrow pointing on the side. So when you're holding it actually up against the CPU, uh, if you're looking at it from the side, you can still see which direction the air blows. And my cooler, right. my cooler has two fans uh, that kind of, uh, 
It has two heat shrink towers to stick up, and then a fan in the middle, and then the fan in the front, and they both blow back so it exits out the back. Yeah, well, that's that's ideally what I think I sh should do since this fan is going to be blowing this way. I'll have this fan going this way too, and this will be going out the back then. Right, because if you have them both pointed at each other, either the top of your case is going to get really dirty, or a graphics card is going to get really dirty. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, it's just going to blow dust around. Because <laughs> uh -huh. if it doesn't blow out... I remember, I think I saw that in a Jay video. He talks about, like, somebody... I can't remember. They put smoke into a case so you can see how the air would actually travel. Yeah. I think Jay was doing something like that with, like, uh... Like I don't know, like some something. streamers or something? You know, like party streamers? Yeah, I can't remember. I saw somebody did that. But, yeah, like, the, I have four fans on my case, so, like, I have the fan in the front of the case that's blowing inside. Right. Because there's, you know, like, a, a mesh that collects all the dust or whatever, and then right. the other fan is blowing it out the back. So, I, I guess going along the whole airflow setup, I guess, of my, I sh shouldn't go against the grain, I suppose, you know. Right, what do they call that, positive or something, airflow? I can, I can never remember. Yeah, I looked at. I, I know you get. A, I was gonna get some more case fans, and they're like, "Well, it just moves dust around." So, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, depends on your temp Linus, and all that. Linus did a thing where he pretty much proved, like, even if you put that shit inside of a refrigerator or whatever, if your CPU temperature isn't. Uh, being cooled off enough, it's not. Uh, that really doesn't do much, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why you need a good cooler, a CPU cooler. 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 But I mean, you can get into that shit as much as you could be as diligent with that shit as you want, because like Jay was using that one thing that you could hook up to your phone to make your phone a thermal camera, so you're actually looking at the the visually how hot the computer is and stuff, you know? Hmm. I mean, like, they have si that's what was that, Puget Systems that Jerry uh, Barnacles has his builds his computers for him. They do that where they, all the computers that they build, they try to make it as efficient as they can, you know, with the temperatures. And they actually use thermal cameras, so it's crazy. Yeah, if, well, if you're paying the Puget price... Because they're not cheap. Puke it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, what's this here? Anyway, we, we've rambled on enough. You're right. You're right. You're right. Let's uh, get on to the news here. We'll, uh, uh, cops uh, staged body cam footage made to look like it was done in real time. Yeah. On, <clears throat> on Thursday, ours reported on a Pueblo, Colorado uh, police officer who staged body camera footage and ultimately forced uh, prosecutors to dismiss felony drug and weapon possession against the suspect. Now the body cam footage of uh, the police department officer Seth Jensen, which was used to, in court, as serviced online. The video above shows Jensen finding a 30, uh, 357 Magnum, about 7 grams of heroin, and 43 $1 bills in the vehicle uh, suspect Joseph Kajar was uh, traveling in. The vehicle was towed after Kajar couldn't provide an officer registration or uh, insurance during a traffic stop. In the footage, Jensen reenacts the vehicle search at a local tow yard. Jensen later texted a local uh, prosecutor telling her that the video was staged. That prosecutor then alerted her superiors and charges against Kajar were dropped. This was concerning... Uh, because all indications in the discovery and during his testimony at the preliminary hearing indicated that the body camera footage actually represented the sequence of events as they developed regarding the search. Furthermore, the staging was done in such a way to make it look like it was uh, done in real time. The items had to be repositioned, etc. Wow. <laughs> so they fucking said, oh, look, I'm searching. Oh, look what I found here. So this, is, so this cop is pretending uh -oh. The cops pretend like he's storage wars, where they fucking crack in and they go, "What's this? 
an op- ep- uh, issue of DC Comics with the first uh, <laughs> Adventures of Superman or whoever the hell. Wait, you mean Storage Wars isn't real? What? No. What's this, that fucking stamp with the upside down plane? No. <laughs> yeah. I used to watch that shit, and then I, I, someone pointed out, they're like, they find shit in every fucking locker. That never fucking happens. So, yeah. yeah well, that's, it says that they have a policy that police officers must uh, turn on body cams during searches. Well, okay. Why, why is the fucking thing not just on all the fucking time? <laughs> the dash cam's yeah. on all the time, right? They can't shut it off, right? I mean... I'm sorry, that's fucking stupid. So, oh. so, so this guy thought he was Spielberg, huh? Yeah. <laughs> He's got to get it over on him. Fucking crazy. Uh, what? Oh, another ar- article. More Android yep. phones than ever are conver- covertly listening for inaudible sounds and ads. What? Your Android phone may be listening to ultrasonic ad beacons without your knowledge. Oh boy, tinfoil hat! Almost, <laughs> a year, almost a year after a d- app developer Silver Push vowed to kill its privacy-threatening software that used inaudible sound embedded into TV commercials to covertly track phone users, the technology is more popular than ever. With more than 200 Android apps that have been downloaded millions of times from the official Google Play market, according to a recently published research paper. As of January, there were 234 Android apps that were created using Silver Push's publicly available software developer kit, according to the paper, which is which was published by researchers from uh, Technische uh, Universität Technisch. What in Germany? <laughs> That represents a dramatic increase in the number of Android apps known to use the creepy audio uh, tracking scheme. In April 2015, there are only five such apps. Oh, fucking great. And then you just read the next one, and that should be fun. The app silently listen for ultrasonic sounds that marketers use as high-tech beacons to indicate when a phone user is viewing a TV commercial or other type of targeted audio. A representative... Uh, sample of just five of the 234 apps have been downloaded from 2.25 million to 11.1 million times, according to the researchers, citing official Google Play figures. None of them discloses the tracking capabilities and their uh, privacy policies. Wow. (laughs) And see, that's the thing. You don't fucking know. I mean, granted, you'll say most have permissions, but if it's an app that's going to use your microphone, then you go, oh, of course it's got to use the microphone. They don't got to say, it'll fucking listen to everything you do. My phone, I set it up to do uh, OK Google everywhere so I don't got to type. I can just pull it up and I don't got to unlock. I don't have to unlock my phone. It can be in my pocket and I can talk to it and it'll answer me. I've done that. I don't even pull the phone out. I can hear it. So, yeah, of yeah. course this shit's listening to you. Uh, Excuse me. Well, uh, I mean, what what are you going to do? Scientists are turning Wi-Fi routers into creepy radar cameras. Yeah, here's another one. This is in the same vein here. Tinfoil hats. Your Wi-Fi router is probably sitting passively in some corner of your room, beaming out invisible light and the internet, but it's also sending information on all the stuff the light passes through and around. It's essentially carrying a holographic image of the room with it. Researchers have tried using Wi-Fi signals to make images before, but not with an out-of-the-box commercial router, according to a release uh, in the American uh, Physical Physical. uh, Society's Physics. Sorry, there's so many P's and S's in here. That's okay, man. That's exactly what a team of researchers at the Technical Institute of Munich uh, have now done. Uh, Imaging across in a room using an unmodified commercial Wi-Fi router. Scroll. The setup placed the cross between the router and a moving antenna with another antenna off to the side to help with mathematical calculations. The antenna off to the side 
oh, the antenna collected light directly from the router and light that reflected a R bounced, that's the wrong word, around and off different surfaces. Some uh, number crunching applying produced an image showing the Wi-Fi router is a bright spot with the cr- this is horse shit. They knew what the fuck they knew what the fuck it looked like, so they knew what the no one's gonna fucking do this. Your goddamn uh 360 connect whatever is not fucking no, no. Uh, I'm more interested in why scientists transplanted a rat testicle onto another rat's neck. <laughs> it says caution graphic. Well, yeah, so I gotta click it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, Oh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Did you see the comment? What is Oh, yeah. Butters with the balls on his chin. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, the thing is, is like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect the, like, the average everyday hacker to try to go in and, Try to do this type of stuff, but like, I mean, like, the if the government they could possibly try to use this stuff, but it, it seems like they already have even better stuff like the connect than they have to. Yeah, it, it's like using this is again like that, like using sounds just to be able to hear what uh, keys you're hitting on your keyboard. It's like. It, it seems like it's a le- less efficient path to being able to, uh, you know, get that, you know. Right. You, you can extrapolate and do this and that, or you could just do this. Oh, yeah, that's much easier. Like, it'd be easier to just hack into your fucking emails. Yeah. Go to your, go to your Facebook. You probably got pictures of your house in there. <laughs> yeah. The Justice Department has opened a criminal investigation into Uber. Say what? The Justice Department yep. has launched a criminal investigation into Uber's use of an internal tool to evade law enforcement and regulators, according to Reuters. The tool, called Grey Ball, sorry, I'm full of sleep here, even after drinking Mountain Dew, and revealed by the New York Times in March, reportedly helped Uber sidestep law enforcement by targeting those users based on their credit card information and other data, and then showing them phantom cars. Uber has... Since said it, it has stopped using the tool to evade law enforcement. Yeah, but I remember I was talking about this. Yep. So they're getting they're getting in trouble, huh? Yep. Yeah. Fucking Uber. I yeah. Mean, as if it wasn't sketchy enough that people were getting you know molested and and or murdered by their fucking drivers. Oh. This is just an uber mess. Oh, the dad jokes. <laughs> uh, is that your last story, sir? Yeah, it is. Oh, no. Okay. Let me Kept throw it nice up. and simple. All right. I, me and my wife are cord cutters. We don't have cable anymore. We just have the interwebs. So I found this article. My fucking chair is falling down to the floor. Well, okay. Wow, aren't you progressive? <laughs> Analyst, the core cutting future has arrived. With most results now in, the U.S. pay TV industry lost 762,000 video subs in the first quarter of 2017, a worst ever result for the period, according to a new report from Mosfet Nathanson. Or Moffat Nathanson. For the better part of 15 years, pundits have predicted that core cutting was the future. Well, the future has arrived. So, yeah, that's basically, they're not going to know that it's real until you stick it to their fucking, you know, wallets, which is the only way they'll know. And they're, you know, they probably view core cutters as hippies, but people just get tired of paying for a billion channels to watch four. Yeah, I, I I shared. I'm gonna have to share you the the comments to this article because I found it, and before I even read the article, I started just reading through all the comments, because everyone's like, "Yeah, god damn it, about time you," because people are very passionate about it. So I mean, look look at all these stupid comments on this little article about you know how the big TV is losing money. I mean, 
everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you know what else they need to do? <laughs> you know, it's it's fucking crazy. They're very spiteful. I mean, the cable companies are screwing people over. My wife's bitter. That's why we got rid of it, because they fucking were assholes. And she said, no, you take it, you can shove it. <laughs> yeah. And um, I remember you were talking about that. And uh, yeah, so. So in relation to this, here's something you might be familiar with. An Ars Technica article. Cody, open source TV app inspires full-blown copyright panic in the UK. Yeah, I remember you, you gave me a couple articles about some updates about this. Yeah, I'm surprised. What was the major update on this? Well, I'm surprised this hasn't like become the big issue in the U.S. that it is. I saw a couple articles where Canada is getting kind of the same, getting like this. You know what technology has gone mainstream when the tabloids start yelling about it? This year's The Sun, The Mirror, The Express, and The Daily Star have run splashes ranging from Cody Crackdown through Cody Killers to Cody Total Ban. It's not that they've stumbled on an underground hack scene. The stories have been briefed by copyright owners and law enforcement agencies. So what is Cody and why is it a threat to the man? And I mean, it's just... If it's like any technological thing. It's not made for fucking piracy, but, you know, people are going to figure out a way to get what they want. And, you know, yeah, just like your computer. You can use a computer for bad things. So they can't really, especially open source software, you can't really outlaw open source software. You can, but it's stupid. Well, Cody Kit was originally just so that you could play your videos on your Xbox. I mean, yeah, originally it was XBMC, and then it became, you know, so much more. And it's the thing is, it's not, it's, yes, it's a, it's, it, it can do bad things. And then if you buy the software, with the apps already installed to stream stuff, that's bad. Also, some sellers are... so I don't know how they're not cracking down on people with, like, game systems that have, you know, emulators with thousands of games already installed. Because those are all over eBay when you look at Xboxes. And, oh, really? You could get a lot of Xboxes with emulate, emulators yeah. and... Yeah, well, I mean, just like pretty much. when they had the original Apple TV, that was... They're, like, fully loaded, but you pay a lot more, and it's like... Or I could just buy the plain one and do it myself, which is what, yeah. you know, I, I mean, the, these people, you know, they're throwing in, you know, copies of their own movies. They're throwing in software to watch streaming shit. And, you know, the, the they're finally going, hey, I don't like my stuff being stolen. And yeah. well, actually, I, mean, I was I was thinking about uh, reinstalling my Cody on my box because yeah it was it was fully loaded but it was fully loaded with a lot of shit <laughs> <laughs> bloatware and the, yeah a lot of bloatware in cody and it's like all the update add-ons are trying to update and it's like right it just gets frustrating you know because it's like uh uh regardless of which apps i use i i just i only need a few but right uh I mean, we don't have to say what those are, but <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all about you know customizing it and making it how you want. I would have plugins to make my uh, I'd have themes and skins and make it look a certain way, just because <laughs> I was I was anal like that. Um, but you know that's me. Uh, well, I installed the Eris thing for oh, my by Cody. The way, by the way, since we're talking about Cody now, I got to throw in. Ted Cruz doubles down on being wrong, pushes yet another net neutrality killing bill. Uh, <laughs> is this... to... yeah, yeah, yeah. Eager to ignore the broad bipartisan support net neutrality enjoys, nine GOP senators this week introduced legislation that would kill the FCC's net neutrality rules. And it's a big, long bunch of shit. <sighs> They're not listening. They don't. They don't know what technology is. Uh, they're dinosaurs. Oh, you! T oh, you're telling us that's bad. So well, you must be right. 
because you got money. No, see, hold on. See, uh, the thing is, I'm sorry. Look at his face. He looks like he's going dirt. But FCC chair net neutrality advocates misrepresenting the truth. This one, by the way, if you find this article on Reddit, the first, like, all the people are literally all caps. God damn it, you kiss my fucking ass. You know what I call that guy? He's, I call, I call him a shit pie. Oh, well. Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai. A shit pie. God damn, I'm yawning. Says advocates of net neutrality are misrepresenting his plan to roll back the controversial Obama era internet rules. For example, saying that you will lose your internet access. That's simply absurd, Pai told uh, Recode's Decode podcast on Wednesday. Anyone who had internet access before these rules in 2015 knows that that's not the case. We weren't living in a dystopia before the FCC delivered these depression era rules to save us. He added, in the interview, Pai defended his plan to end net neutrality, arguing it would help foster competition in the telecommunications industry by making it easier for smaller broadband providers to grow and gain market share. The net neutrality rules make internet service providers treat all web traffic equally. The rules also classified broadband companies as common carriers, allowing them to be regulated by the FCC similar to public utilities. His plan would scrap that Title II provision, reclassifying the companies and hand over authority to the Federal Trade Commission. Companies would be asked to voluntarily enact net neutrality principles through terms of service with customers. Pai said the Justice Department and FTC would be strong regulators at a claim critics dispute. Title II regulations actually squeeze the smaller networks, he said. Just last week, we heard from 22 small ISPs, internet service providers, companies that nobody had ever heard of in towns uh, very people ever visit. I guess very few people. Uh, what they told us is, we are being inhibited. Really? I said the companies told him, Title II hangs like a black cloud, keeping small... <laughs> Broadband providers from getting financing and enhancing their networks. Critics of Pi's plan say that it would benefit large internet service providers like Verizon and AT&T at the expense of smaller startups, which might not be able to afford to cut deals with internet service providers in the way that internet behemoths like Google and Microsoft could. You know why? Because it's fucking true. This guy's a fucking liar. Look at this. Oh, shit, bye. He's feeding a line of bullshit. That's all he's doing. A line, line of, of a line of shit pie. He's and you know what? The thing is, a lot of people don't understand. It take five minutes read it. You understand? Oh, he's full of shit. <laughs> you know who else is full of shit? I love. Well, before you said that, I love how he he brings up like a non-related issue. Like I never even heard of anybody debating whether that you're going to not have internet anymore. That wasn't even a problem. They never said, we'll take, they're going to take away our internet. It's not like gun control. They're going to take away our guns. No, that's not how it works. But, uh, yeah, you know, who is full of shit, the government and not just our government. China complies, <laughs> compiles its own Wikipedia, but public can't edit it. Beijing, I... it'll be free. It'll be uniquely Chinese. It'll be an online encyclopedia to rival Wikipedia, but without the participation of the public. And don't expect entries on Tiananmen Square 1989 or Fulongong's spiritual group to come up in your searches either. Scholars and experts handpicked by Beijing to work on the project say only they will be able to make entries, the latest example of the Chinese government's efforts to control information available on the internet. Because, you know... That's a fucking thing you can do. That's why people have VPNs, you fucking idiots. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I could call this, why I'll never go to fucking China. But I also heard this morning on the radio, they were saying that there's an arcade somewhere in China. Apparently the video is circulating. You know those grabber claw machines? Yeah. Apparently, to make it more sporting, they filled one up with live kittens. That sounds <laughs> fucking terrible. That's God damn. That's awful. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. But but speaking of other countries, check this out. 
Ba boom boom. 18 year old student creates cancer detecting brawl. A high schooler from Mexico, see, other country, other country, designed a bra that helps in the early detection of breast cancer. Drawing inspiration from his mother, who lost both breasts to the disease, Julian Rios Cantu set out to find a better means of early detection. Breast cancer, if caught early, has a survival rate of nearly 100%. Despite this, many women still forget to do monthly self-exams that could lead to early detection. Cantu's solution involves adding technology to an undergarment most women are wearing anyway, a bra. Dubbed Eva, the bra uses approximately 200 biosensors to map the surface of the breast and monitor for changes in temperature, size, and weight. Mapping changes in size and weight is the goal of most breast self-exams. The temperature sensor, Cantu says, is to analyze areas of over-vascularization, uh, um, looking for increased blood flow to a specific area. This blood flow could be uh, feeding a tumor, he says. Cantu's design brought an impressive $20,000 prize after being after being 13 other entrepreneurs uh, from around the globe at the uh, Student Entrepreneur Awards. So, yeah, that's that's pretty yeah. cool. That is... <laughs> Big Pharma doesn't like that because they don't want anything to help, help you, you know, like with, uh, that's why that there'll never be cures or whatever to that because there's no money in cures. Okay, Chris Rock. The money's in the medicine. <laughs> Ain't no money in the cure. Oh, by the way, speaking of bio stuff, uh, electronic device bends like skin and biodegrades. Researchers have created a flexible electronic device that can easily degrade just by adding a weak acid like vinegar. In my group, we have been trying to mimic the function of human skin to think about how to develop future electronic devices, said Stanford University engineer Zihan Bao. She described how skin is stretchable, self-healable, and also biodegradable, an attractive list of characteristics for electronics. We have achieved the first two, flexible and self-healing, so the biodegradability was something we wanted to tackle. A United Nations Environment Program report found that almost 50 million tons of electronic waste were thrown out in 2017, more than 20% higher than waste in 2015. Mm. So, yeah, I mean. I think I remember uh, we did a, a similar article about that with, uh, like, uh, the uh ele electronics that could be uh like had uh the circuitry you could use like water as circuitry or something like that or... yeah, yeah. I, I know you're all about the wearable so you know yeah a newly developed flexible biodegradable semiconductor drapes over a human hair that's look at that yeah that's now, wild now i remember we did one where it was uh it was degradable with just water or whatever. And we were like, how, how, was, oh how can God, that be useful then? <laughs> right. And if you sweat, it's, it's gone. So, so I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Did you, did you see this? Google turns Raspberry Pi into a dirt cheap home competitor. Home competitor, what's that mean? Well, you remember Google Home? Oh, this, yeah. This is a competitor. If you've ever wanted to have a conversation with your own tiny homemade computer, then your prayers have just been answered. Raspberry Pi has teamed up with Google, bringing a voice integration to the Pi with a clever combination of hardware and software. Packed with the same tech that powers Google Home, the companies have released a kit that transforms a regular Raspberry Pi 3 into your very own virtual assistant. The pack contains a voice hat hardware accessory on top, board with a speaker and a microphone, giving Pi owners everything they need to add in voice integration. For the uninitiated, a hat refers to any physical hardware that needs to be added on top of a Pi. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, interestingly, this collaboration marks the first time that Google has produced something for hobbyists. The initiative is called Artificial Intelligence Yourself, AIY, and Google's uh, director of the project, Billy Rutledge, told Wired that he wants to create more hobbyist uses for Google software. I'm guessing this has to do with their software development kit that's getting released. 
Right. Um, for those who want to build a new friend, the only way to get the board is to buy the latest issue of the company's official magazine, The Magpie, where it comes as a freebie, as well as being used to lovingly make your own Alexa alternative. Raspberry Pi state that the tech can also be programmed with your own spoken commands, adding voice integration to other Pi projects. With over hundred or with over ten million Raspberry Pi sold, it's easy to see why Google chose to partner with the company. The DIY computer manufacturer's latest release, Raspberry Pi Zero W, impressed us, offering built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a ton of programmable possibilities for only ten dollars. With products like that making coding and innovation more accessible than ever, it's clear that Google wants to infiltrate the hobbyist movement before it becomes even bigger. I mean. Really, you look at this fucking thing, and I'm sorry, I see Apple too. I see some guy with a fucking soldering iron and a chunk of wood in his garage, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's a, it's like fucking, you know. In a couple months, you could see those assholes, you know, from Google wearing turtlenecks, pretending to be Steve Jobs on fucking stage, presenting. This is our latest development made by some guy in his garage. Um, <laughs> but right. you know, it's. I mean, yeah, the you know, you can get a Raspberry Pi Zero for five fucking dollars. And it can run coding, not that great, but it can run it. I mean, that's that's amazing. Um Well they did you ever check out that uh other thing that was supposed to be the Raspberry Pi's competitor that was more powerful? It was uh Oh the the Asus is by Samsung. Oh. Well there's like three or four of them. There's the Beagle Bone Black, and then there's the uh the Predator. Or something, shit like that. It's this bright green fucking thing that mm. really doesn't have much more to it. I looked at them side by side. It's got like more RAM. Is about it, I think, or something right. like that. It was. It didn't impress me. Mm. I mean, the the pies keep upping the game every different model, and when you get the zeros, they start taking shit away, but adding features to where I'm like, I'll I'll get yeah okay, <laughs> right. So, now the the Samsung it it was a little bit more expensive, but it uh it was it it looked like it was pretty good because it uh it had all this like it was the same type of processor and stuff, but it was just like that it was up a couple of generations, you know, like of the like oh. the what was that that Qualcomm processor or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it it was had similar specs, but better. And uh, it was even compatible. Like you could have the the plastic case that was supposed to be for the Raspberry Pi was also compatible with the Samsung one too. Oh, Check yeah. This. The Internet of Messy Things. How much damage can a smart toaster do? Lots, and not just burning your bread. <laughs> uh, let me see how long this is before I go on. Okay. In the beginning, devices on the internet were fun. My favorite was the Carnegie Mellon's Computer Science Department <laughs> Coke machine. Starting in the 1970s, you could ping it to see if it had sodas ready and if they were cold yet. It was good, silly fun. Now everything except the cat, asterisk, is hooked to the internet, and it's not fun, not so funny at all. And I said, why is there an asterisk? So I clicked it, and it says, there are actually a lot of internet of thing cat devices. My calico, Maribel Marvel, doesn't like any of them. They got like cameras and sensors that'll track your fucking cat and your dog. But, uh. Oh, sure. Some Internet of Things devices are enjoyable and useful. I have an Amazon Echo in my bedroom and a Google Home in my kitchen. I use them every day. But I'm aware of their privacy problems. You should be too. For example, both devices are always listening to you. And when I say always, I mean every single second of every single day. In theory, they're both just waiting for their activation phrase, Alexa, or OK Google, respectively. In practice, that means they're listening to you constantly. In theory. I'm not too worried about this. Unlike Windows 10 Cortana, you can tell these devices to stop listening. Of course, they'll be a lot less useful that way, but at least you have the option. No, what really concerns me about the Internet of Things aren't the new devices that are explicitly connected to cloud services. It's the ordinary gadgets that are now listening in. Take, for example, my Vizio uh, 4K 50-inch uh, uh, smart LED TV. 
it's a fine TV, but still recently it was tracking my viewing habits and sharing this information with advertisers. Vizio wasn't the only TV company guilty of snooping. LG and Samsung have peeked into your viewing habits too. Mm. Even devices such as smart toasters, yes, that is such a thing, can tell their vendors what type of you, what time you make toast in the morning, or more seriously, a hacker camping in your internet connection can track your toasting habits to figure out when you're not at home. You see, Internet of Thing devices tend not to have any security to speak of. Heck, even Internet of Things security systems have been shown to be as secure as a lock made out of rubber bands. Yeah. Leaving well, aside how much... I'm, I'm just almost done with the whole article, so... Leaving okay. aside how much damage... Uh, home Internet of Things devices can do for their owners. Internet of Thing gadgets are becoming the agents of choice for massive distribution, uh, distributed denial of service attacks. Who knew your DVR could help wreck a business over the internet? Hackers knew, that's who. If that weren't bad enough, IoT firmware uh, tends not to be updated at all. Once someone finds a security hole, and it can be a brain, as brainless as a single administrative password for all devices, it's open forever. Let's say your gadget can be updated. And of things, devices tend to be patched automatically by the maker. Do you really want to try to get a drink of cold water from your refrigerator only to be greeted by an update 32% complete message? I don't think so. I love gadgets. I really do. But when it comes to the internet of things, I prefer most of my devices to be dumb. They just work better that way. Oh, that's that's a good point. I don't but, see the point of having your TV be smart. Like, I know a guy who bought a smart TV, and then he found out right after he bought it that all he needed to do was buy a fucking Roku, and it would have had all the features without any of the fucking costs. He paid like a thousand dollars extra. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, I mean, the the thing is, is like, I know a lot of people are are going to be like. Well, what's what's the big deal? I don't care if somebody knows what time I make toast or do the laundry. But I guess if you if you look at it in a different way, would you would you want like it somebody like a hacker or robber to uh know the, those things in your schedule and stuff? Like, what would that be good for? Hmm, if you're casing out a joint or something or a house, knowing people's personal schedules and what they do and their habits and everything that that could that actually could be sort of dangerous i would think well i saw in the news there was a person that had a uh, baby monitor uh for their kid and the kid got up in the middle of the night screaming and they're like what's the matter and they listened to the baby monitor which apparently the whole thing was connected to the internet and there's an entire website where people just go on and they can because there's a talk feature where the parent can press a button and do like an intercom and talk to their child. And yeah. the person on the website can hack right into it. And they were talking to the kid, some man the kid had never fucking heard. Saying hor- he was saying horrible shit, like, I'm going to kill you, little boy, and all this shit. And they wanted to sue, but how are you going to? It's some guy on the internet. They have no idea who this fucking guy is. Hey, could you imagine that Barbie doll that we were talking about before that uh, was connected to the internet saying that shit? It was like yeah. a guy. <laughs> yeah, some pervert sitting there looking at your little girl. Ugh. Okay, yeah. I got, I got the, the problem is, is these <clears throat> things need to be... I mean, if you want to have like a whole like George Jetson smart home, maybe these things should be connected on their own personal network versus just connected to the whole internet, you know? Yeah. The, to, to, I mean, to access, my computer, to get on your computer, everything you have to do, it goes... Oh, this has to access your firewall. Is this okay? But your, you know, your low level, you know, your thermostat and all that shit just connects to it fine. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 in the infancy. There's going to be a lot of trial and a lot of error. So, strap on, yeah. folks. I, I I'm with the guy. I'm I've got a dumb car. I I I don't. It don't. It doesn't access the internet unless my phone's in it. And it's, it'll still drive even if it is. I mean, so. even if even if it wasn't connected to the internet, even if I'm talking to an AI by asking me, "What would you like today?" and I'm trying to take a shit or something like that, that's 
still like uncomfortable for me because I, I it gives me a feeling like the AI is like another person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want, I would want to be able to turn Jarvis off if I could, you know? Oh, when I uh, updated my computer the other day, it reset. Apparently I must've updated because when I opened something, it opened, uh, def- it was like, Hey, you want to download this new version? I said, yes. And it opened edge, which I never use. And I, I told it, no, set my default browser to Chrome. And every time I clicked, it would let me see Chrome. But as soon as I clicked it to add it, it wouldn't add it. I actually had to fucking Google it and open a different w- different window in controller panel, which I didn't know, and then select it. Just, I don't, I, you figure just cl- clicking the app would default it, but no. It, when I went to Google, it said... Google uh, Chrome is not set as your default browser. I'm like, what? So <laughs> yeah, before we uh, came on the show, we were talking about a the Windows 10 S. Um, Barnacles was doing a v- video on that, and they have it so locked down where you could only install or run apps from the Microsoft Store, and you can only have Edge as your browser. In fact, you can only have Bing as your default search engine. Or your homepage. I mean, I understand because, you know, it is, it's like a Chromebook. So yeah. it, it, they have control over what you get. I mean, it's just their ecosystem. But no. I mean, well, I, he, he was, he was saying that it, it's like, a, uh, uh, what's that word where you, you're, uh, uh, forcing somebody to do something? Uh, you're holding their money over there extortion yeah they it's pretty much like extortion because it, it's only like one flag within the code that lets you be able to turn into a normal windows 10 uh, and they say if you want that you you would ha- you have to pay like 50 dollars more for like the pro s version or whatever and it's just like one flag that can be set that you have to change you know right by the way, speaking of bullshit, Intel, yeah, I'm sorry, to derail you. Intel tells Core i seven 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 the seven seven the K owners to stop overclocking to avoid high temps. Some owners of Intel i Core i seven 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 zero zero and seven seven zero zero K processors have uh, been complaining. For the past three months of uni- unusual temperature increases, according to user accounts, temps sometimes spike up to 90 degrees Celsius, close to the oh, core maximum 100 degrees Celsius threshold. The register reports Intel finally offered up a response to the complaints. Though it's, the answer is not sitting well with affected users. An ongoing uh, thread on Intel's community forums, a spokesman for Intel offered of the following response. We appreciate the feedback you have provided and your patience as we investigated this behavior. The reported behavior of the 7th generation Intel Core i7 processor showing um, monetary, momentary, momentary, sorry, temperature changes from the idle temperature is normal while completing a task like opening a browser or an application or a program. In our internal investigation, we did not observe temperature variation outside of the expected behavior and recommended uh, specifications. For processor specifications, please refer the Intel i7 <coughs> processor product specifications. Most motherboard manufacturers often customize fan speed control settings that may allow for smoother transition of fan revolutions per minute. Please consult your motherboard manufacturer's manual or website for instructions on how to change default fan speed control settings. We do not recommend running outside the processor specifications, such as uh, by exceeding processor frequency or voltage specifications, or removing the integrated heat spreader, sometimes called delitting. These actions will void the process for your warranty. The too long did read version is that everything checks out on Intel's end, and users should not overclock their uh, Core i7 processors which have unlocked multipliers specifically for overclocking. As you might imagine, Intel's response did not sit well with users. The first response to Intel's post is from a TikTok customer who has sworn off Intel products. 
three months waiting for Intel to come up with a solution, and now this this is all you can say? We know already what you've just said. You know that? Never mind. This would be my last product from Intel, the user wrote. Another user called Intel's response BS, noting that some 770K uh, processors run even hotter than AMD bulldozer overclocked at 5 gigahertz. I don't even have the major issue like everyone else is having. However, after Intel's response just now, they're not getting another penny out of me. I'm going to sell my Intel stuff and go to Ryzen. Yet another user wrote, To Intel's credit, some users experiencing the issue have admitted to delitting their processors. One reason that is done so that cooling solutions can be applied directly to the CPU die, but it's a risky procedure that can result in a dead chip. Removing the uh, IHS can also render certain coolers incompatible, as they were designed with the height of the IHS in mind. Another motivating factor is to replace the stock thermal compound that Intel uses between the die and the IHS. Intel has also never stated that it would warranty processors that have been overclocked or overvolted, though it does offer an overclocking warranty as a separate purchase. However, this isn't the part that all users are that has all users all riled up. They're ticked because Intel basically shrugged off the temperature spikes as being normal and telling them to run their unlocked CPUs at stock settings rub salt in the wound. So yeah, you pay all that extra for a K processor so you can overclock it. And they say, oh, uh, just don't overclock it. <laughs> yes, so they were, and they were pretty much saying like it's because these people, the only reason that they're overheating is because people are fucking with them. Yeah. And is now is this uh is this what, what was the seventy seven hundred K is this like the supposed to be the equivalent top of the line like the eighteen hundred X or whatever? Uh, I think. I mean, I don't, I don't. I don't follow the Intel parts as much. Yeah, I mean, there's it's always been Intel. Their their grading system has always been like really confusing for me, you know. Yeah, because they they not they won't just have an i seven or i three. They throw all those other fucking numbers in there. Yeah, and I don't know the in the naming convection. I I just like I said, they rubbed me the wrong way. I my my iMac was an Intel machine, and I I you know okay, but after all the reading I've done, I I just went I went around with AMD, and this is really uh... well. I I watched a a video like it was just out of interest. I I watched one of those delating things. That's where pretty much they, I guess it's like slightly curved or something. So they like grind it down like even flatter or whatever i think that's what he he said it was something like that yeah they take the top off of it so it's literally just straight the cpu the the cover is off yeah and they either they either put a different thermal paste on it or they uh they uh they put the just run it completely off and have a different cooler I just realized that I had uh, you selected, so I hope I didn't have that on the entire time I was doing the articles. <laughs> That's because you told me to pick you, God damn it! Oh shit! So I'll be sharing all these. These are these are all the stories I had, by the way. I'll uh, I'll be sharing these, and if uh, anyone wants to read them, yeah, if anyone wants to read themselves, they can. I apologize if that was what I did. What did did what did you have me like? I, I had the square on your picture. Oh, okay. Because you told me to well, I mean, pull up your screen, and that's what I did, and then I forgot to pull it back on me. I think. But oh well. What are we gonna do now? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it was just. It's just, just words and pictures. <laughs> yeah, I'll just. Uh, it's a podcast. You can listen to it. Yeah, yeah. Plus, that's what um, we give you, so you can play along. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that the Ryzen though, it it definitely does look pretty tantalizing. I might maybe uh, next month I'll put like, you know, like save like fifty or a hundred bucks or something towards it. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. 
I mean, my next build will probably be a Ryzen build. I don't know when that'll be. I was thinking Christmas, but I might just get a new chair because this is... If I'm actually going to be in it for an entire night gaming, which I have done before, I might as well get a nice one. Right. So I have till Christmas to figure it out. Or, you know, later. <laughs> so... Well, what about your... Are you going to wait for them, too, for a video card? I don't know. I'll probably... Whenever whenever Vega drops, I'll buy it. If it's worth it. Because I would like to run four monitors, and with my GPU now, I can only run three unless I got a uh, an adapter, which, fuck that, I'll just get another video card. Right. But if you run an adapter, then you got to run all kinds of other uh, drivers and shit and fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, everybody was let down because uh, with they were expecting Vega, but they just got a s slightly cheaper, a little bit better 480, you know? Right. Well, I mean, I'll wait for Vega. My, uh, I got that co-worker that's a big uh, Xbox fan. He's all into uh, the Project Scorpio. And he's like, dude, it's going to have six teraflops. And I'm like, yeah, Vega is going to have 12 with the capability of going up to 24. Yeah. So, Because he's like, oh, it'll do 4K at 60. No, it won't. That's a nice thing for them to say, but that's not going to fucking happen. That's why originally the 360 was going to be the 720, but they couldn't guarantee that it would do 720 at 60. So, How are these... Uh... These Android boxes claiming to do like 4K and all this stuff. Uh, they're made in China by some Chinaman. You can say whatever you want if you're in another country. What are you going to do? See you? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I, I guess playing video, video in 4K isn't as demanding, I suppose, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the Roku... Uh, the newest one can do 4K, I guess. I don't yeah. have a 4K TV set, so I don't, I don't, you know, focus on it. I just can't believe my those XP machines that I have are that they, they have more RAM and are it's supposed to be technically faster processor, but uh, because my tablet has more cores in it, the cores definitely outperform the XP machine. Then you know. This tablet actually is supposed to have a uh, eight cores. Hmm. Yeah, eight cores. and I think my phone is four cores. Isn't that what yours is? Um, no, I think it's more than four. Let me look. I don't remember. I was all into it when I was buying the fucking thing, and I forget already. Uh, Google Pixel XL cores. Uh, tech specs. Pixel XL, size and weight, display, battery, uh, storage, ports, media, connectivity, OS. Huh. I don't know. What the fuck? What the fuck, Chuck? <laughs> let, me just, let me ask uh, Cortana. How many cores does the Pixel XL have? Benchmark Android, okay. Like, I don't fucking know. Do it. Oh, I asked my phone about uh, Siri and uh, Alexa, and it's like, oh, I like Alexa. She's a good assistant. Siri gets mad respect for me. <laughs> I feel like that. Uh. Only four cores? Wait, that's the Pixel. Got the XL. Where the hell? Hmm. This is old. This is from 2016. Fuck that. Fuck that. Well, that's when you reserved it. <laughs> no, I was in... Uh... What was that? Uh... Black Friday. 
Uh, well, I just meant the year. Yeah. Android Authority, maybe. Let me go here. Pixel. Uh, battery display performance software. Fucking review. I don't want the review. Benchmark shit. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no uh, SD card expansion, but oh well, it's still like a hundred something gigs. So I don't care. Yeah. Like, you definitely got my phone beat up because it's only got 32 gigs. Well, I went with the biggest one because, you know, why not? A lot of people, I was yeah. going to get the Nexus at first, but I'm glad I didn't because a lot of people are upset because they're basically, Google's refusing to fix a so, uh, either a hardware or software bug where their phones just shut the fuck off and they can't, right. use, they can't use them. <clears throat> so... Okay, processor. 64 bit. It's a quad core. Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 821 with a 2.15 gigahertz plus 1.6 gigahertz. And 64 bit quad core. With 4 gigs of RAM. Oh, well. Anyway. It's a pretty good amount of RAM, though. Yeah. I mean, it's snappy. Snappy. Yeah, I, I get. I always get... Con I start to get fuzzy on, like, the different models of the the mobile CPUs and GPUs. Yeah, when they say Qualcomm, blah, 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 I'm like, I don't know that. No. I don't yeah. know that shit, man. <laughs> Wait, wait till you have the, the uh, they've got the fucking boxes where you can put a full size GPU attached to whatever now, if it runs Thunderbolt. Right. So what? Lap, lap, laptops and shit, you're using them. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on uh, external video cards? Are, are they just like, uh, eh? I, I, personally, I wouldn't have one because I wouldn't limit myself to fucking a laptop or something that would need an external one. Because if you're going to have something, fuck it, man, build something and put guts in it. But, you know, I, uh... Well, I, I'd like to get a laptop actually someday for scenarios like this where uh, everything's in disarray for me, including my computer and everything, you know? Well, I've had laptops, I've had tablets, and the thing is, as soon as you get it, the shit starts to degrade to where everything else is updating so fast you can't catch up. I have a Samsung Galaxy Tab and you know, I got it because well, my old Kindle got up, you know, everything else outdated it as soon as I bought it. I figured that it would being a Samsung, I'd be able to upgrade and everything. No, no it's been like two updates. And it, yeah. that's it. It I mean, I use. I just wanted to use it for an e-reader and something to read on the internet when I didn't have access to something else. So right. it does that. But you know, as far as having something, paying a lot of money for something like that is stupid. If you're if you want a game, get a fucking system that can handle it. If you want a a, a HT uh, a home theater PC, build a fucking you know thing and hook it up. I mean, it, it's it's not hard. It's not rocket science. I've I've done it. Right. You know, oh. you, you, you're pit, you're picking your own parts. I mean, Macs are overpriced, so I wouldn't bother with, you know, a MacBook or an iPad or anything like that. Because for what you get, you can just build it your damn self. Yeah. Well, I'd like to just get one just, you know, for internet and general productivity, I suppose. You know, maybe be able to do a little bit of 3D editing on there, some Photoshop or something. Yeah, I got my uh my tablet. Like I said, I was originally just gonna use it for reading books and stuff, and then I said, "Well, I'll use it for the internet," and and I don't because you know I end up using my damn phone because it's in my hand anyway. Yeah, it's, it's 
you think a bigger screen would be better, but you're not typing on a keyboard. You're using your, you know, the on-screen keyboard. And, yeah. you know, I, I just use my damn thumb and it's just as fast or I say it um, on my phone. I can't do that with my tablet, but anyway. Yeah, I put Cody on my tablet. It works pretty good. Yeah, I had it on my phone, and I could uh, mirror to uh, my Roku. It's just that, you know, I I, I I tend to use my phone for other stuff. While, like, while I have a video playing, I'll pull something else up. So I can't I can't do that. So. Yeah. Well, I use Cody in my uh, OneDrive account because I have all my music on there. Mm. And then I, I edited uh, the M3U list. Mm. and uh my uh code editor and stuff what doesn't and have Cody I, on it nowadays yeah but well like it it was hard because i had oh go ahead i was gonna say i'm pretty sure this bed will have cody on it before too long <laughs> yeah yeah get those smart beds where you have where you could adjust the levels of hardness like those raises up and down yeah i heard there's a commercial for a mattress from the guys like yeah they're selling floor models i'm like i know you're not taking out and using it and sleeping butt naked on it and stuff but that's the one people try it out and that still would make me uncomfortable so. it's like please set my sleep number to five and it's like updating updating yeah <laughs> like you said <laughs> yeah no that's all right well I've had fun, but I think I think we ought to call it a night here. Yeah, I I guess so. I mean, we it's been a good night. We got a lot done. Any parting words, Mister Ian? Um. Oops. Shot of Soko. <laughs> On behalf of Ian and the people who couldn't make it tonight. Uh, thanks for listening to us. If you did, yeah, they, thanks for coming on. Not because <laughs> you didn't. You pushed we'll, out. We'll try to see you all next week. Maybe Ian will even have this up before then. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll try that. And maybe I'll, we'll have some music by then. All right. Well, actually, maybe I was thinking maybe we will. Uh oh. With my mixer. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that next week. Well, that'll be some more fun. All right. We'll uh, catch you all on the other side. Boobs. Shasoko. Boobs.